Okay, uh, Sinatopi. Welcome to uh, Sixakea to be Blackfoot Confederacy Territory from Saskatchewan to um, Wyoming. Nistu Nidaniko Mokoyo Sokoyi coming to you live from the Great Falls uh, Airport. I uh, welcome to Native Wellness Institute's um, Wellness Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday to dig to bring in um, positive, productive, and proactive uh, dialogue to keep the teachings of our ancestors alive. So I'm coming to you. It's kind of interesting because uh, the patriarchy has a teepee here and has a history of their ancestors, but not much of uh, Blackfoot Confederacy ancestors. So I just, uh, this is where I'm coming to you live on this podcast. Um, Today is November 6th, and today Jean Tagabon will be joining you. Um, again, it was in 1805 that some of the outsider colonists came here. They call it Lewis and Clark. And we're, uh, so I, I just wanted to um, express to you that if you're feeling all kinds of roller coaster emotions, that it is, uh, that's a good thing because we're not all numbed out. We're not all um, reacting. I, uh, I was <laughs> practicing my al last night and I went to bed at 10 o'clock. Did not know any of the results. I smudged. I said, hi, oh, strapatipi. Hi, oh, ninna. Hi, oh, napi, natusi. Hi, oh, akita, biwa. I just ask that everyone on this continent, north of the medicine line, south of the medicine line, down to the prophecy of the condor meeting the eagle, that everyone has a long, healthy life, and that there's equity, that there's diplomacy, and that the democracy of the United States of America stays intact. No, any individual can extract it or buy it, that the democracy stays intact intact. So that was my evening prayer before going to sleep at 10 o'clock. And I slept a beautiful eight hours. I dreamt. It was a, it was really a good dream. It was about uh, grandmothers and mothers and sisters and badass aunties making safe place uh, for all of our families to live where truth is told. And I, so that was, um, so when I woke up this morning, again, I smudged, nice smudge, I stay at a hotel that they know that's, they respect, I smudge, they never tell me, turn that smudge off, because <laughs> that's what the patriarch does, tells you to quit smudging, remember that, they will tell you to quit smudging. So I smudged, I went to the hot tub, I went to the swimming pool, because I always clean off with water. I sang um, Muffet Little Dog song, calling song, and I prayed for all of you. I prayed for our country. I prayed for everything that we need to pay attention to to keep our democracy in um, order. Uh, then, then I looked at the results, and my first reaction was, I um I got a little teed off, a little bit pissed off. And um, my second reaction was, well, we've been here before. Patriarch has done this to us lots of times. They threw all my, well, they threw my parents in boarding schools. They threw my relatives in residential schools. They tortured us. They sexually abused us. And it was all under the crown and under... The Jackson of the United States and those who wrote some of the Constitution. I said, well, so we've been here before. <laughs> so I just saw, uh, I would like you to please put in the comments any of your reaction. So my first call was from uh, my Blackfeet partner, and he's a carpenter in uh, Los Angeles. And so that was that was a very loving gesture. He goes, how are you doing? And I go, I said, I said, I'm doing fine. I slept eight hours. 
practicing my Al-Anon, because you know in Al-Anon we say we didn't cause it, we can't cure it, we can't control it, and we just take care of ourselves. So he shared, and I thought it was beautiful, he said, just remember Elon Musk, and he named all of these billionaires who were backing and wanting to keep the patriarchy alive, and they would never, never allow a woman so there you go, it's about gender. They would never allow a woman to be in charge, no matter what. So again, you know, it's good to have an embezzler, a rapist, 94 felons. Um, oh, that's a good candidate. <laughs> so um, I just appreciate that call. And, and um, but it, one of um, his reactions was, when last time when he was a, a president, nothing changed for him. Us working class, us that take care of our families, pay our mortgage, pay our truck payment, pay our, our bills, raise our families, you know, sing our songs, have our ceremonies, pick our plants, and pray to Creator every day. We nothing changed for us, so. We're just, uh, we should just go on. And so we, we were laughing because we always laugh about things and just keep on smudging, keep on singing. And then my second call, and I just, I just saw was Cecilia Fire Thunder. <laughs> Cecilia Fire Thunder called and she was the president of, you know, uh, Pine Ridge uh, 2002 to 2004 and was impeached because of women's rights. She opened up her clinics on Pine Ridge to any woman who wanted to get counseling about abortion. So uh, even back, so now we're talking 2004, she was illegally impeached because it takes 18 of the districts to vote and only 13 were present and they impeached her because they want, well, and it had to do a lot with because she also was calling for audits. <laughs> So after they locked everyone up <laughs> to come to jail, the truth was known. So she called and Cecilia was calm. She goes, I'm just checking in with you. And, and um, she's been lobbying for, I don't know, 50 years. You know, she lobbied for not only VAWA, but Indian religious freedom, um, just many things for native families and now education. And she said, well, the, the good thing is our democracy is in, intact. No person can distract or take that away. And we just got to roll up our sleeves and we got a lot of work to do. So her and I, again, we laughed and she goes, I go, Cecilia, I just love you. It's a cockle, ma'am. And um, we, you know, we exchanged. We've all, we've been in this for 50 years lobbying. <laughs> and we will continue. And so, so then I, you know, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you. So my next phone call was from, and I won't say a name. Um, it was a combat um, vet, uh, female, way younger than me. And um, she described to me last night that the emotions she went through, she felt like she, we were being beat up. We meaning the tribes, we meaning the people of color, we the two spirit. And that she almost felt like um, rolling into a fetal position, but she did not. And I said, that's common. So my reaction was, yeah, I got really pissed off. I said, I saw this piece of beautiful beadwork that, um, and it was so beautiful, but it, it was beaded F-U-C-K-T-R-U-M-P. <laughs> I just thought that that was a, a beautiful way to, <laughs> F-U-C-K, beat it in there. And, um, and even though I don't like profanity or I don't like cussing or any, any of that stuff, I, uh, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I, got, I went through the emotion of being a little bit pissed off and just um, that women are still thought of as less than, that um, they think they can legislate our bodies. So, and I thought, hmm, we should introduce a bill to um, start messing with their testicles. <laughs> okay, the new bill is, we're, if you 
are not deemed worthy uh, to be a father, we're going to castrate you, eh? <laughs> might happen. <laughs> so, yeah, you might get castrated in other ways. We're watching you. You are very clearly told us what you think of us. So I just wanted to say, you know, that I, I appreciate that combat vet that reached out and we got to process and then we started talking about the things that we're looking forward to and um, specials, you know, female grass dance and the summer coming up. We got to talk about all of the good things and I said, well, let's just let's just concentrate on that. So I'm just sharing with you and so my, my next call was my mother. And she had not heard the news yet. And I said, well, how you doing, Mom? And she goes, it was such a beautiful sunrise today. It was like the beautiful, beautiful sunrise today. And she said, I watched the sun come up. I'm here. I'm by this fake teepee. See how they uh, stereotype us? Anyway, I, um, I'm coming to you. So... Uh, she said it was a beautiful sunrise. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna go take care of my errands. I'm I'm gonna and then I told her the news. She said Nelly, and that's what she calls me. She said I'm just gonna go ahead and smudge. Everything will work out. And so that's why I'm coming to you live right now. I just wanted to say you can come to Native Wellness Institute's uh, site. We will be. Um, we're meeting in Portland. In fact, tomorrow, you're all welcome if you're in the Portland area at the museum. We're doing John Isaiah Pepian, our executive director, Jeline Joseph, and I are doing a talk on the buffalo, and we're going to show the film Bring Them Home. So come join us uh, in Portland. And then Mother Nation is having a large conference on Zoom today all the way through Friday. So I'll be joining them on Zoom on Friday. Uh, and then next week, this is you all are welcome, you know, stop by at our new property, uh, Barbie's Village. We have, um, we're maxed out in terms of registration, but just stop by. Uh, from all over the country, all over internationally, are coming to learn how to do a gathering of Native Americans training of trainers. Myself and Professor G. Mark Harris and our brother, uh, Dwight Francisco, will be facilitating a training of trainers on how to do a gona a non-government patriarch gona <laughs> a non-government patriarch gona you know where they make you fill out papers and study you ours is about healing with the teachings of our ancestors so come join us so i'll be in portland we got some good things coming up um we're going to be at pachanga in december uh, adults working with youth, so come join us there. We're uh, Native Dads Networkers. Go to um, Mike Duncan and the group. They're they're on the run. They're doing all kinds of healing. White Bison is doing healing. NAFA's doing healing. The American Indian Cancer Field, um, Indian uh, Foundation is doing healing. And we'll start planning our fourth annual. Uh, White Bison is going to be putting that together. But I just wanted to come to you. You know, as you're been through this, been there, done that, we're just going to keep uprising our women to be equal. We're just going to keep getting health care for all of our women, to for any parts of their body, and that no uh, testicle patriarch man should be legislating their body. We also are just helping all of our families to make ends meet economically. And uh, we're doing it with culture. So I just want to say, you know, we continue on. Uh, Jean will be, and possibly Lori. Lori will, might get on a Zoom here. We'll just be giving you some, just our raw reaction. And I, I say, you know, Kitsikakoman, we're stronger than this. Our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our ancestors, they gave us strength. And so we're, we're uh, just coming to you live, Wellness Wednesday, Native Wellness Institute. And um, 
I just have to say, just, just speaking to you, I can't see all of you, but just speaking to you right now just made me feel better. So I would encourage you to talk to, again, I'm at the Great Falls Airport. I gotta get on a plane in a minute here. So I just encourage you to talk, surround yourself with unconditional love. Surround yourself with those who know you, those who will not judge you, surround yourself with a like-minded and if you encountered the others just look in their eye and pray for them don't take them out just pray for them look them in the eye and pray for them because our democracy and i just want to give a shout out to uh, tyson running wolf who run one in montana and thetis crow uh, our bulls bullshoe relative she so that um my mother said we need to work on getting her a Kami Poismanix, a stand-up headdress, so when she gets sworn in in January, she's got her um, stand-up headdress. Women standing up. Women representing, women being sacred, women being cherished, stopping the violence, stopping the missing and murdered. That's all we gotta continue on, and those being equal, and allow every young prospect mother to grow up in the safest place and, and when she does make a child, that it grows up in a safe place. We need to make it a safe place for our LGBTQ2 spirit. And so we've got our work cut out for us. And I just wanna say, um, I um, thought of all of you coming very soon. I did was casted in a film about the timely Tasha Hubbard's film called Birthing of a Family, based on a true story. I was casted in that and it, it went wonderful. We have top name. I, I guess I can uh, uh, wait for the press release and then I can share some of the pictures, but it's it's a healing 60s scoop film. So please uh, look for that um, premiere coming to you very soon. Um, they're still, they got, um, they're still filming till the 23rd. Uh, my part was done, uh, it was over in a week. And I play a Blackfoot elder married to a Cree husband. <laughs> we had fun with that. <laughs> anyway, we, we find these 50 year old siblings, four of them who wanna know who they are. So we lead them into ceremony and we start to help them discover who they are, who they authentically are. It is such a great uh, film that will be coming to you, and it was an honor to be part of. So that um, will, um, my mom was saying, now you're a movie star. And I go, Mom, I'm just me. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I have those skills. Yeah, I can act. But I just, I do it. What's my motive? So that we can heal. So that we can heal from the traumas in um, our past with our families even the trauma last night get into action pull up your big girl panties and get into action so with that we'll look forward to seeing Jean and Lori and we'll talk to you very sound soon uh, please share this and please dialogue please let Native Wellness Institute know what you're thinking please let us know what your requests are so uh, onward and forward Kitaki to Matsuno. Till next Wednesday.